What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel tonight! Start the weekend off right. Uh, they've released the full team ratings for Madden 22 at launch, and this is just something that I've always done. I don't know why, like before YouTube, it's something that I've always done. As soon as they had the Eagles ratings, I went out of my way to look at them. And I mean, early days on my YouTube channel, I did an Eagles franchise every single year, but I actually can't remember the last time I did like a genuine at launch, because these are launch ratings, Eagles franchise. It's just, it's almost like a time-honored tradition, I'm sure people here like seeing me react and or overreact to Philadelphia Eagles ratings. So we're going to start on the, the, the bottom end of the roster. You see all Rick Rovato there. Long snapper. Still don't have the long snapper position in Madden. Very, very much on the bottom of the list of needs that we need. But something that could be addressed. Uh, but looking at the back end of the roster. First guy that, that kind of jumps off here is Tyree Jackson. The converted quarterback now. Tight end. Uh, we have right here. I mean, I'll tell you right now. This website. I know that. I, I don't know why. Like it gives you like just these top... It's so clunky. Like, I don't care what my tight end's kick power is. And, like, that's the first thing. Like, it, it, there has to be a better way to do this, a better way to present it. Um, I honestly think they should kind of make it like, like, uh, Mudhead. Like, any of those ultimate team sites where literally I should be able to just to click a player. I'm not going to do it because it takes you to another screen. It doesn't give you any more information. They should just show you the whole player attributes very easily and not have, like, this whole, like, okay, we got to kind of go through here. Hope you remember what his speed was, because that's six clicks the other way. It's I'm not a fan of the site, but point being, we're talking about Tyree Jackson converted uh, quarterback. I got 93 throw power there. So if you're looking for like a shenanigans potential switch to quarterback, want a fun cupcake style team rebuild, Tyree Jackson and moving to QB, he's probably going to be low 60s. Good athlete, could be an interesting one to keep it out on. I actually, I you know for another preseason football, he's definitely a guy in real life. I want to keep an eye on. Rest of the ratings, I mean, we got rookies there. Teron Jackson, 61. Uh, Patrick Johnson from Tulane, 63. I don't know who that is. Michael Walker and Shaquille Taylor. Not familiar with them. Only rating, I'll say, on this initial page, I think Herbig's a little low. Nate Herbig's guy played a lot of snaps for Philadelphia last year. Versatile interior lineman can play either guard spots. And originally, I think, was signed to be, well, obviously not the heir because... He was a you know a UDFA I think out of Stanford, but he was training to be the center uh, behind uh, J uh, Jason Kelsey. So either way, six two is too low um, for Nate Herbig, like especially last season. You know the thing you say about him is is a compliment to offensive line. He was a guy that like he played a pretty. I mean, we had so many injuries on the offensive line. I don't know how many snaps he played. I feel like we got like six, five, six, seven starts at him. Like never heard his name. Which is a great thing when you're offensive line. So I think Herbig, personally, you know, I'm not going to make a mountain of a molehill over a guy that's backup guard at this point. But I think like 66, 67, probably in that territory is where I'd be looking for all Nate Herbig. Go to the next page. Probably going to be more rookies on this one. Let's see what we got. And this is my initial reaction. I have not seen any of these ratings yet. Uh, we got Jacoby Steven, 64. Get Michael Jaquette there. Still nightmares on him getting destroyed against Dallas. Jacoby Steve, that's actually... Eh. Oh, they might even classify him as a linebacker there. So, I mean, say it is what it is. Zach McPherson from Texas Tech by way of Penn State getting a 65 there. 89 speed. Uh, Jason Huntley's always solid. Jack Driscoll, right guard. 65, kind of low again. I mean, he was debatably our best rookie last season. I, I, I would have given him... 68, 67, 68, 69, somewhere in that territory. TJ Edwards, probably better than a 66. Quez Watkins, really, really fun player. Uh, I think he could potentially, if he can stay healthy, have a breakout year for the Philadelphia Eagles. We got that 94 uh, speed, I think. Again, the site sucks. Like, why do I have to? It's so not user friendly. 94 speed, 90 acceleration there for Quez Watkins, 80 catching as well. Uh, always, you know, if you look at that Philadelphia Eagles roster, probably one of the funner wide receivers that you could potentially just go off with, get him going on a dev trait, have a breakout, and be just your, your franchise god. Uh, Mullins, Marlon T, another draft pick, USC 66. Jordan Howard with a 66. That's a little bit disrespectful, given what he's accomplished in his NFL career. Uh, Keen Butler, love seeing him on the Philadelphia Eagles. Davion Taylor, overpowered if you're a user. Uh, 66 overall, but you got that 89 speed, 91 acceleration. What else stats we got for Davion here? 79 tackle, 84 jumping. Uh, Jesus Christ. My eyes, uh, maybe just my eyes suck. 81 pursuit. His coverage ability is actually kind of sucks. Uh, 84 hit powers. Now, he's actually a really nice looking user linebacker. That's someone that 
Absolutely does not use your linebackers. Um, Epps there, Joe Flacco, elite. Is he not elite? 68 overall, pretty much confirms he's not elite. Uh, Avery with a 68. Man, wasn't he like a 75 or 76? That is a big time downgrade for Avery. I wonder if he's one of those guys, though, if you shift to a defensive end, maybe his rating would shift up a little bit. I mean, he has really good athletic ability there. Across the board, speed, acceleration, strength, agility is not bad. 77 tackle is bad. Um, so we got here 77 pursuit, coverage ability is butt cheeks, 81 hit power. Actually, not that great. I mean, I'm expecting the Eagles to be pretty bad, honestly. Uh, but that is a big downgrade there for Mr. Avery. Second page, let's go. What do we got here? Mm, punter that I've never actually seen punt, 69. Nice. Andre Dillard, another one of our fantastic first round picks, 69 overall for a guy that is. I'm not going to say has the inside track because you can see old Jordan Mailata near the top of the screen over the 71. But that's a very interesting battle for the Philadelphia Eagles. That's probably the biggest battle that we have until if another quarterback comes on the roster. Is who's going to be our starting left tackle because I feel like neither one of these guys, if they lose, like they're going to become the swing tackle. And I think there's an argument to be made that Dillard or Mailata, you know, I almost want to see them challenge for that left guard spot. The loser of this battle Go to war with Isaac Siumalo and see if we can just make the general best offensive line. And if that's the case, then you kind of go with Dillard, who got drafted as a first-round pick as a tackle, and Mulata, who we've made into a tackle. Maybe we can still make that shift right now in his career, kick him inside the guard because he's you know massive human being and might be able to do it. Landon Dickerson, 71 overall. It's not brutal. I uh, consider this way. If, if Sewell got a 75, I'm pretty sure that's what he got for the Detroit Lions. 71 for Dickerson in the second round is not brutal. Uh, Wallace over the 70. Milton Williams. I wonder if he, what, how interesting his skill set's going to be. Um, 83 speed, 86 acceleration, 81 strength. Again, hate how this thing's let up, but um, can I open just like another tab here? So we got from Milton Williams here. Milto. We got 76 tackle. I mean, he's, right now he's pretty much an athlete that's trying to develop his game. Ooh. I mean, 77 pursuit ain't bad. Play rack block. Yeah. It's actually a little bit underwhelming for Milton Williams, but is what it is. Philly's going to be not good this year. We have Jalen Hurts at quarterback, QB1, with a 71 overall. Uh, good athlete, 87 speed, 89 acceleration, 88 agility. We got 84 throw power, which is, is you know, it's, that's fair, but that's that's going to be a kind of tough quarterback. They got 92 uh, toughness because that's something. Uh, 88 change of direction, 88 ball carrier vision, 83 juke move, we got 85 break sack, which is pretty good, 80 throw under pressure, let's be honest, 84 short actually, his actually, actually the accuracy stats aren't bad, the only thing that's really holding Jalen Hurts back is that 84 throw power, and if you can find a way to make that work, might not be like, a, he could be like a good sleeper Madden quarterback, regardless of how you think about Jalen Hurts and Deshaun Watts, all that stuff, the Eagles quarterback situation, I think either way, Jalen Hurts, for like a sleeper quarterback that could be good to use in Madden, uh, very much on list. I don't know how J.J. Ortega Whiteside still get a 71. That's pretty bad. Uh, Singleton for almost having a bazillion tackles last year. 71 overall. Kenny Gainwell, I want to take a little bit of a bigger look at that. Just give me a sec here. We got Jake Elliott, 72. Fulham, 73. Pretty fair after he kind of simmered down a little bit towards the end of last season. The Rager God will take another look at that. Greg Ward, 73. Actually, that's fair. Giving G. Ward and Jalen Rager... These same ranks. So look at Kenny Gainwell. Probably my favorite pick from last year's draft. Uh, 90 speed, 87 acceleration. It's actually kind of... Okay. 69 catching is really bad for a guy that, what, 50, 60 catches at Memphis? That is actually, like, really bad. Like, I would have said, like, 74, 75. Somewhere in that range. Like, this might be the the, the, the most heated I'll get over rating. And that's not even bad. 72 for a guy that we got in the fifth round is a very good rating. But what what about his, like, what? Why is his catching so low? 65 short route runnings, not bad at all. I think I think they did a, little, a slight disservice there on the on the catching ability of Ken. I, I think you're giving him, yeah, give him at least in the 70s for a guy like that. 72, though, again, at the end of the day, 72 for a fifth round pick. Is pretty good. Jalen Rager. I know he's going through some stuff right now mentally. Like all that mental health. And you know. I, I'm personally not one to bother someone. Like they say. He lost one of his friends. He's murdered. 
Uh, unfortunately, it's just frustrating. Everything about it. You can, I think it's fair as a fan to be frustrated with Jalen Rag. You can be understanding of what he's going through, but you know he failed the physical. Do you have a valid? You know you, you're not really got an invalid uh, a really tough personal loss. But I think for someone like myself, it's completely fair just to be with where he's at right now. Frustrated with where Jalen Rag. But 73, we got 93 speed, 91 acceleration, 83 catch. I mean, he's still a fun player to use by all means. 94 jumping. Um, 91 change of direction, 86 ball carrier vision, 84 juke move. Uh, for the route running, what are we looking at here? 74 short, 72 mid, 76 deep, 69 release. I mean, he's he's, he's a decent Madden wide receiver, but you know the the landscape of Jalen Rager in real life is still definitely pretty frustrating for a lot of Philadelphia Eagle fans. But is what it is, man. And that's pretty bad that like now we're starting to look at like 74s is on the final page. For the Philadelphia Eagles base roster ratings in Madden 22, they're going to be a god awful team. We got 74 for Kerrigan, 74 Boston Scott, 75 Carry On Johnson, 75 for Devontae Smith. Already we broke down his stats: 91 speed, 93 acceleration, 85 catching. I'm, I'm happy with Devontae Smith's rating, especially compared. He's tied with Jamar Chase, uh, only one spot behind Jalen Waddle for the top rating. Josh Sweat, 76. He looks nice. Eric Wilson, a lot of speed at linebacker, solid. 76 Barnett's fine. Avante Maddox, 77. Really, really good speed there. 93 speed, 94 acceleration, 96 agility. Very fast. McLeod, 78. Ertz, 80. Fair, given the year that he had last year. Higher grade with an 80s fair. Miles Sanders, 81. Maybe still slightly slow, but let's be honest. Miles Sanders, I don't want to say he took a step back last year, but he definitely did take a step forward. I, I think as a running back, we still saw the explosiveness, the home run ability. But he was like legitimately like, are they almost statistically the one of the worst receiving backs in the NFL last season, which is unfortunate because his rookie year looked pretty good. Uh, 81 for Anthony Harris. I don't know what his rating was last year with the Vikings, but maybe kind of low. Uh, Dallas Goddard, 84. We already knew about that. He was the number 10 tight end uh, in the game. 85 for BG. Fine. 88 Lane Johnson. Fine. 88 Darius Slay is fine. I think the 91 for Kelsey, a little low. A little low for a guy that I think's. I mean, I don't know where the rest of the centers kind of. Can I actually like look at the rest of his stats here and see where he compare? I don't know where he breaks through the rest of the centers, but I don't think there's a better center in the NFL than Jason Kelsey. And I don't think 91 is probably the highest rated center. It's probably not the highest rated center in Madden 22. Uh, Brooks giving the injury 92 is fine, and then you have old Fletcher Cox 94 overall. Yeah, he's probably the best player on the Philadelphia Eagles, and that is represented as such. So. I mean, if I'm looking at the Eagles' ratings, I knew that they're not they're not a great roster. Um, this is easily the lowest expectations I've had as a Philadelphia Eagle fan going into a season. Uh, in, you know, to a much smaller scope, going into like a Madden season, I knew that they're going to be bad. Probably a bottom 10 team from a talent standpoint. In Madden, and you throw in the fact that, like, let's look at our best players. Fletcher Cox, you know, over the... I'm not going to say over the hill in relation to Madden. Like, these guys aren't going to thrive in your Madden franchise. They're most likely at their ceiling only going to get worse. Fletcher Cox is there. Brandon Brooks is there. Kelsey's there. Slay's there. Lane Johnson's there. Brandon Graham is there. Anthony Harris is there. Zach Ertz is like, so like, pretty much if you go to the top 10 Philadelphia Eagles, most of those guys are as good as they're going to get. So it's it's a very interesting franchise to think about. I mean, I still don't have my main Madden franchise team picked yet. I'm not going to tell you that it's not the Eagles. It's Eagles are very much not first place, very much not the team that I'm picking. And as we start to you know to kind of drop in and get into Madden 22 content, um, you'll understand what I'm how I'm approaching the franchise this year, especially with that big time September update coming, and you're not going to be able to you know carry on with your existing franchise mode. You pretty much have to restart. I think I have a solution there, but ultimately, I, I Philly is on my short list of teams. But they are a team that I obviously have made franchise modes in the past, and I don't know if it'd be a little too rinse and repeaty. But I definitely want to hear what you guys think about the Eagle ratings. Do you think anyone got robbed of a rating? Who do you think is the worst one? Like, from what I can tell, um, honestly, you know, Gainwell's catching. I want to say Gainwell's catching is bad, but the fact that we still have a fifth-round pick with a 7-2, that's not that bad. Singleton, 71, could be a little higher, but then you don't want, you want to be careful. Because how good is actual Alex Singleton actually? You don't want to get into that eco-chamber of, this guy gets a lot of tackles, therefore he should have a high battery. I still think 71 is a little low. I think he could have been 74, 75. JJ being a 71, still way too high. I think, you know, it's it's not bad. I think maybe 66 for Jordan Howard's a little weird for sure. I think you could have Jack Driscoll be a little bit higher. 
I think that Nate Herbig might... If you told me, C4, from like a rating standpoint, who should be the higher rating from their base, it might be Herbig for just how... And that's how bad it is, right? That's how bad, I don't know, the Eagles roster actually is. That is my biggest claim. But I definitely want to hear what you guys have to think uh, for the Philadelphia Eagle ratings. Now that we do have these ratings available to us, though, I will be doing some legwork videos for you guys coming out uh, in the next couple of days where, I mean, we can look at the worst Madden 22 ratings across... The entirety of this launch. So I'm going to look through pretty much every team. Maybe get a top 10. Maybe look at every single team and talk about their worst ratings. That's pretty fun to do every single year. I'll definitely be looking for the top 10 rookies to trade for. I'll kind of break it down by stats. Look at guys that are not necessarily, you know, the the first rounders. Like I'm not going to say, hey guys, make sure in your franchise mode you go get Jalen Wall. Find the guys that are second, third, fourth, fifth round that are really, really good values that you guys can trade for in your franchise modes. We can look at the uh, top offensive players to trade for, top defensive players to trade for. Now that we have all this stuff. Um, so that content will be coming to you guys, kind of starting to you know ease into Madden 22 content. Um, but for the rest of this video, guys, A, you can say now, actually just in general, because it'll help me for future videos, if you've looked at your favorite team's ratings, do you think there's someone that's just ridiculous? It's way too low. Let me know in the comment section below, or Eagle fans in particular, how you feeling about the Eagles ratings at launch. Let me know in the comment section below. But that'll do it for me today, here today, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's C4, saying peace.